Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome back to a new video. It's Ibrahim Muslim and today we are back with a video on Clever Configurator. So this is the part 3 on Clever Configurator videos and it's been a while I haven't made a video on Clever. So I was gathering information and trying to get as much information about Clever and try to get as much stronger on the knowledge so I can guide you properly. So we are here with the Clever Configurator on the screen and if you haven't seen my previous video of the Clever Configurator series then click on the card on the top right side of the screen to go back to those videos. So in my previous video I explained how to mount the EFI and how to load the config.plst then I explained about ACPI section boot section so this is the third video and it's gonna be on the CPU devices and disabled drivers GUI and these four sections will be covered in this single video so stay tuned for the other videos and like share and subscribe for more so let's start with the video and here you can see that there are a couple of things mentioned in CPU section. The first one is frequency. So I have tried basically many different values here and that gives no difference to the system but it just mentions that frequency right here. If you know about the bus speed of the CPU that will be easy for you to understand but basically it's the bus speed is some kind of CPU connection with the north bridge of the motherboard and its relationship with the uh, with the CPU and the memory so it varies with the values about of 100 megahertz that will be like 10,000 100,000 kilohertz and for clever configurator and the latest one for from for example if you're on a version equal to 3994 or later you just don't really need to mention these values here and then comes the latency latency is another big thing and there will be a number here but basically what latency is that it's the kind of the basic speed of a CPU how far it, it calculates some instructions and stuff and then comes the QPI QPI stands for quick path interconnect but and that is released by Intel and for the CPU specifically and it's kind of a latest bus system uh, for the CPUs you can say FSB system for the CPUs and that that replaced the older one which were used in the previous systems of Xeon, Canium and that were used in 2008 or few years later and you can just ignore this type and then comes the TDP and that stands for thermal dead point Mm, just kidding that's another thing we were talking about CPU and TDP stands for thermal design power and that's the sometimes it's kind of a component of the CPU or GPU and you just don't need to mention that as well so just ignore it and now comes the important section here and C2, C4 and C6, C6 are the Intel power saving options and that was mentioned in ACPI as well they are the C states and you can enable them here and then on the right of that is QEMU and this is a very big thing QEMU is a kind of a software made by a freedom organization and that basically is a virtualization software and it's pretty fast and if you want to run the OS X and Clover configurator Clover on that system on that virtualization software you have to take that checkbox of QEMU and on the right side of QEMU it's clearly stated turbo disable and as if you know about the Intel Turbo Boost uh, facilities in Intel Core i5 and Core i7 CPUs you would learn that Intel CPUs boost to some specific frequency without overclocking them and if you will click that that will be disabled and then comes the that's a use ART frequency and what ART frequency is it's kind of a patch for Skylane builds and if you uh, if you're using a uh, Intel Skylane CPU you need you need to use this ART frequency to enable your audio of CPU like if you want to enable your CPU audio and then comes the HWP enable and it's also related to the Skylane CPUs and it's if you want to disable the Intel speed shift technology and that's the latest technology though but sometimes that can cause 
a problem with Hackintosh so you might want to disable that as well so here it's written HWPE enable but basically it disables the Intel speed shift and one more thing which I forgot to mention in the previous video was the nvidia and we samp mode policy is equals to one and nvidia is equals to drv is equals to one if you're using both of these two options and if you have a gdx 880 and if you have a gdx 980 or 980 tie or that might work on gdx 970 then you can get a new brand new 5k monitor plug to display ports to it and you can boost to about 5k on your monitor so that was all for the cpu section now we'll move to the devices section it's a big section though but we'll just talk about little here for this video and i will explain you rest in a little videos to come that will be a pro guide this is just a beginner guide so here you can see it's a fake id on the top left and here you can see a couple of options if you're using an intel graphics and your CPU is not kind of compatible with your, your Hackintosh, you can use this Intel GFX and add your fake CPU address to get that thing working. Same for NVIDIA, Wi-Fi, NVIDIA, Wi-Fi IME and SATA LAN ATI and XHIC. You have to search on the internet for your fake ID or you can search your hardware and you have to just mention that here to patch that up. Then here you can see USB inject, add clock ID, fixed ownership and high current. So here inject, inject the C USB configurations. If you add clock ID, this thing sometimes fixes your sleep problem that might be caused by a USB incorrect clock or something. And so this is, this is basically used to fix the sleep problem. Same is the case with ownership. It, it's used to fix the compatibility issue with the USBs. High current gives a, a high voltage to USB to, char to get your devices charged. And here on the right of the USB you can see audio so I have mentioned one because in the latest Clover if you use if you're using an Apple HDA and if you want to enable your ALC audio you have to mention one here and this fix is connected with kernels and CAX patches here and both of these two sections combined will enable Apple HDA and that won't go bad if you update your system so that means it will be sticked to your system if you update it or not and that kind of behave like if you're updating your real mac so this is a real nice feature you have to write one here and in kernel and kex patches you have to write all of these and i will explain this in my later videos as well so stay tuned and here it's re reset hda and low power state I have enabled both of these and that makes no big difference but sometimes that AFG low power states causes your Apple ADA to crash so better don't use it until you don't require it and then we will move to the right side and here is LPC tune which is low power control tuning and if your system is eating a lot of power and your CPU is not going to sleep properly you can use this and then there is no default properties use Intel HDMI that's simple as it sounds then here is the HPET and basically it stands for high precision event timer and this was developed in 2005 by Microsoft and AMD and it's a hardware that is used in personal computers basically it's a hardware timer which is used in personal computers and it is used to handle events in the system like events and interrupts and uh, I don't know why it's linked with the clover but that might be used to enable HPET instead of if you're using a very old CPU which tends to use a per, uh, older clock uh, that might be PIT or RTC and then here on the right of it is set Intel backlight that means if you're using a laptop and if you're system is not properly handling the backlight of your laptop's monitor this will help it enable that and here you can add some 
devices which are unique to your system or laptop and you can patch them up and add them to the OS X and the fourth thing is disable drivers and GUI. Disable driver is linked with the Clover UEFI and Clover bootloader basically. So here you can mention the name of the driver you want to disable in your Clover so that don't run at the booting time of Clover and simple as that we will move to GUI and here you will set the GUI uh, graphic user interference for the Clover bootloader itself it's not related to the OS X by any means but that will handle how the bootloader will be displayed on the screen of your Hackintosh while you boot into the OS X and here on the left side is mouse if you want to enable mouse in Clover and the this is double click speed and this is the most motion speed enable means it, it will be enabled in clever configured a clever bootloader mirror means if you move left it will be moving right and vice versa then here is scan and this thing is scans for the entries of different operating systems connected with your system so if you click on scan entries the clever bootloader will scan different operating systems connected to your system and we'll mention that so you can boot into them right from the clever bootloader and here you can just click on the tools legacy kernel linux so you can set different values for them as well so you can here if you select kernels and the number one is found old kernels new latest so selecting these settings will affect the speed of bootloader loading itself and the operating system then we'll move on the right and we can see language screen resolution console mode theme custom icons and text language is the language of bootloader clever bootloader and resolution is the basic resolution it will boot into and if you don't find the one you want to boot into the bootloader of your Clover bootloader, then you can just mention that here customly. And here is the console mode, max, mini, and zero. Here is the theme. If you have custom icons, you can just mention it. You can just click that checkbox and add that icons in the Clover EFI. So that will be loaded at the boot times. And if you click text only, there will be no images, there will be no icons of the bootloader, but only text. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope this helped you out. If you have any question, query, or problem, let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video and you want more such videos, please like, share, and subscribe. That helps me a lot. And until the very next video, please take care. Allah Hafiz.